Hi guys, Law Lord here. Today we'll be making an in-depth law video on the story of Peter Mueller, who is the main protagonist in the last war story of Battlefield 5, The Last Tiger. But first of all, a few disclaimers. First of all, major spoilers ahead, obviously. So if you don't want any spoilers, now's the chance to turn back. Also, you pro you're probably wondering why I'm playing multiplayer gameplay instead of, of gameplay of The Last Tiger. The reason for that is because the war stories tend to have a lot of talking in them, and so it'll probably talk over me, which are quite a lot, which is qu which would be quite annoying. To I know I can mute the gameplay, however, if you see in my other videos, I don't really like to mute gameplay. And one last disclaimer, the reason I am making an in-depth video for this particular war story is that this is personally my favourite war story and in this video you will see why. Two things that set The Last Tiger apart from the other war stories are that one, you get to drive it in a fucking tank and two, in this story you actually play on the other side. You play as the commander of a German tiger tank crew and the, play the character you play as is called Peter Mueller. Your tank number is ta tiger tank number 237 which your crew has next name Stefan and the other members of your crew are the driver Kurtz and the two loaders Schroeder and Hartmann. And the setting is in 1945 in Cologne, Cologne, Germany, where you and the other rest of the German army make one desperate final defense against the Americans who are attacking. So Peter Mueller's tank is ordered to help support German armor and infantry units fend off against American infantry and armor units. At first, this happens without a problem because Je the Tiger tank was literally the most powerful tank in World War II. It was certainly better than the American Sherman tanks. Ew, Dude, don't even insult me with their presence. However, the Americans have like lots of firepower. They have artillery and heaps of tanks. And even though their Tiger tank is really strong there's obviously only so much they can do since they event they eventually end up alone and end up badly damaged and stuck inside a building at this point Peter Mueller reluctantly sends Hertman out to scout to see if there are any other Americans because they need to move however they don't want to walk into a trap However, Hertman disappears. They fear that he deserted. They do decide for a bit to wait for him in case he didn't desert. However, then a, a, a whole army of Americans shows up and there's no time to just sit back. They then go on with their orders, which is, and these orders include retrieving sensitive information. That the, Ameri that the Americans have retrieved. They do that. And also disabling the American artillery and also retaking their anti-air guns so that they can shoot down some American planes. And then they are ordered to regroup at the cathedral, which is where the Germans are holding their main defense at. But however, this is when they find Hertmann again. However, they find his corpse hanging off a street sign. You see, there were a lot of deserters in the German army at this point. However, the German army did not take desertion lightly. As you can notice several times in this mission, we're being rounded up, branded as traitors, and then being hanged around the streets with signs saying things in German like deserter or coward and traitor and stuff like that Sch Schroeder does is perfectly fine with this because he's a very fanatic German soldier 
and he believes that Hurtman was a traitor. However, the driver, Kurtz, and also Peter believe that this was not justified in because he was Hurtman was just a boy. Very important point for the last part of the story is that Kurtz and Peter were very good friends. Very, like, very, very good friends. And they were probably friends since before the war. But anyway, at the end of the mission, you re you go to the bridge that the German army is retreating over to, obviously, retreat. However, when you just get into onto the bridge, the bridge blows up. And then Peter realises that Kurtz is walking away. He d confronts him and Kurtz says that the German army deserted them and left them to die or be captured. Peter implores him to come back, but Kurtz decides to leave. Peter then changes his mind and decides to just let him. However, Schroeder, for being such a fanatic German soldier, shoots him down with his MP40 and then argues with Peter that Kurtz was a traitor to the German Reich. Ha while they're arguing, however, several American soldiers come out from the rubble quite a dis long distance away and, and try and implore the remaining two German soldiers to surrender since they are outnumbered greatly. Schroeder obviously decides not to and implores Peter not to. However, Peter, who by this time, who has already been questioning the German Germany's ideology, decides that it's just no use, not only because there's no use in fighting, but also because he realises he was fighting on the wrong side. He throws his Iron Cross medal onto the floor and then raises his hands to surrender. However, Schroeder then shoots him. And you don't see what happens after that, because obviously Peter is then dead. However, I would assume that Schroeder was then killed after a final stand against the Americans. You're probably wondering, why did I tell you all that? Why didn't I just let you play the game yourself? Because one, you probably won't buy the game. Two, if I just got straight to the point, this video wouldn't be long enough. Ha. Uh, and three, if you try to picture what I just said, if you haven't played it already. If you haven't played it yet, but you plan to, then you probably shouldn't have watched this video because I just spoiled the entire thing. But then again, I did warn you at the start of the video. Uh, but if you try and picture the story I just told you, then you can't help but feel emotional because if you were a German soldier, then you would have been witnessing the whole nation that you fought and worked so hard to build crumbling down. Yes, it was an evil regime that was crumbling, so yes, it, des it needed to be put down. But put yourself in their shoes. And also, not only were they witnessing it crumble down, they were, for they were questioning it's reality. In Assassin's Creed Rogue, it's you can't help but be emotional because Shay eventually questions and later defects the assassins, which was his family and something he worked so hard to be a part of. It's the same in Battlefield 5. These German soldiers worked so hard to build this nation, and yet not, they're eventually questioning it, realising it's an evil thing, and also witnessing its destruction. Imagine that if, imagine that if that was your country. I'm, I'm, of course I'm not defending Germany, don't get me wrong. Na Nazi Germany was an evil country, but I'm just saying, put yourself in their shoes. And that's the story of Peter Mueller's tank crew and why The Last Tiger is my favourite war story in Battlefield 5. Let me know what you think in the comments section. That's after all why they're there. Like the video if you did enjoy. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this. I make 
lore videos and gameplay videos, and also commentary videos if you're new to the channel, but you probably have already figured that. But anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.